Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna have a look at the new Creative Memories Simple Kate page kits. If you have not played with them yet, they're amazing. They're a quick, easy way to make a two page spread that just about anybody can do. So today's lesson, we're gonna take the template sketch and ideas and I'm gonna show you how to create a template in which you can use over and over again with any three double-sided sheets of paper and embellishments and stickers of your choices. So you could make something like this. Nice and easy, off the sketch. Let's head to the craft room and I'll show you how to do it. So if you have not tried the simple page kits, I'll show you basically what they contained. It's one instruction sheet. They'll give you a set of embellishments for doing some decorating enhancing. They'll give you two base pages already designed. So they would sit like so. And then they will give you a cut apart sheet. So with this sheet, you're gonna cut all the pieces and they show you on the back which cuts to make when and then you follow the little diagram sketch here and you reassemble the page as it's shown in the diagram. So if you like the sketch, what I'm gonna show you today is to how to turn this page here that they give you with the kit into a working template that you can use time and again. In order to recreate this, you will need the following items. You're going to need your 12 inch trimmer to do your cutting. You are going to need a ruler to make some notes. You are going to need a pencil because you're using a ruler and you are going to use an alternate kit in order to replicate the design. For me, I'm gonna be using the uh, Bold and Slate Designer Pack. It's an advisor exclusive. I just like it because of the neutral colors. And from this kit, I'm, you need three sheets of paper and I'm, of course, an embellishment pack. So I'm going to be using the Bold and Slate Embellishment Pack that will go with it to replicate the stickers. And in the sticker set, it did have a long sticker. So I did punch one of the mirrored chain um, border maker cartridges and I'll cut this in half to give me my two long pieces in my design. You're going to need two pieces of paper for your background. So for my background pages, I elected to use the wood panels. And then the reverse of that will be this nice designed inside when I make my cuts. And for the second piece that's gonna be my cut apart, I'm gonna be using this sheet and I like the design on both sides. So they, by flipping it this around, I will be able to replicate that sketch. And of course I have to rebuild it on something and I'm going to be using some natural pages. So three pieces of paper, an embellishment kit, something to make a border and we'll be good to go. Step one, before you cut apart your pull apart sheet, you are going to take a ruler and a pencil and you are going to measure all these pieces here and make notes on your page here. So you'll have a record for future. So for these ones here, I've done them really quickly. The first box is a six by eight. Number two is a six by four. This one is a six by two. This one here was a one by 10, a one by 10, and a four by 10. I'll have all my notes, then I can cut this apart and use it on my other page because I have my record. If you've already cut your page apart and used it, I will have a instruction page of everything I'm doing today on my links. You'll find it in the description and you can print it off to 
do basically what I'm doing now. So step number one, mark this one on your page. Done. Step number two, take your back pages here and you will want to note the positioning of your square here. These are eight by 10 inch squares and you are getting those because they are set two inches from your outside edge and they are set one and a half inches from your top edge and two and a half inches from your bottom edge. So you'll want to know that when you're marking your pages that you're going to be cutting up to use the reverse side. Once you have all your measurements and these are noted, you're basically ready to start working. The collection I am working with is a um, directional collection, and I did that deliberately to teach you how to do directional papers. So this is my cut apart sheet. I will cut that one after. First, I'm going to be working on my base page. So you're going to decide how you want your layout to look like this, like this, or if you want to have your wood sideways. I want mine vertically and I think I want it set so these darker pieces are in the middle. My back side isn't directional, just my front side is. So when you go to work with this piece of paper, you'll find out how your layout's going to be and you want to fold it over on itself because you know you're two inches from your outside edge based on your sketch. So we'll lay it on our mat really nicely. And there is two ways that you can do this. And I will go over both. So we'll lay that on our mat. We will take our zero centering ruler. Our first uh, measurement is two inches from the outside edge. These are nice because they're three inches across and they give you nice big uh, block square so it makes it easy to measure. So I'm just going to go two blocks from my outer edge on my paper like so and I said that I am one and a half inches from the top so I'm going to mark my one and a half point and I'm going to mark my two and a half point from the bottom. So this is basically what I'm going to be cutting just along there and out. Now you can mark it or you can just slide it in your trimmer and make your 12 inch trimmer do all the work if you use your little uh, binder clips. I keep some on hand on the bottom of my cutter and I usually keep extras. So if I ever demonstrate this to someone, they say, wow, that's amazing. I can give them a set right away. But here we are, we'll slide our page down. If you're using your binder clips, we're gonna go in our two inches, right? And then from the top, we are going down one and a half inches. And if you recall, if you've ever had a demonstration, the cut line that you see here on the center of your trimmer to the edge of the outside of the trimmer is one inch exactly. So if I want my cut to stop at the one and a half inch mark, I'm going to set my stop of my clip at the half inch mark here. So when I slide my trimmer down, it stops at the one and a half on my, on my trimmer. So you can make sure that's nice and snug, nice and snug and it's stopping. Another point I do want to make when you're setting these up to make sure that your, um, line your two inch line here matches your outside of your trimmer your trimmer does have a little play up and down so before you cut make sure that your rail that you're cutting on is in position so that these lines do match up perfectly so i'm stopped at the one and a half here it will stop at one and a half here 
on my bottom edge. Again, I am going to stop my bottom edge. I want it two and a half inches in from the 12. So I'm, I want my trimmer to slide down and stop at the nine and a half inch mark here. So I'm two and a half from the top. So I'm going to set my peg so it stops at the ten and a half. Double check that my trimmer's lined up evenly so the cut line matches my other line. My white line stops on the ten and a half and my clips nicely in place right there. This way you'll never go over your cut. This is a great technique if you're using multiple cups cuts on an assignment because we're just doing the one not really necessary. You can just use the line technique. I just wanted to demonstrate what it is. I am turning this around to do my trimming. So I will turn, oh, actually I'll go this way so you guys can see. And I'm gonna take both pages together. this way there we are I'm going one and a half from this side two and a half from this side so I'm gonna lift up my page I'm gonna slide this into the two inch line here there we are Make sure that's at the top of the bottom. So I'm just going to start at the one blade and go all the way down to the side. And done. Next, we're going to rotate. This is my one and a half inch side. So I'm going to go in one and a half inches. I'm going to start my blade at my cut line over here and I'm going out to the end of the page then I'll turn it around I'm going two and a half inches from the bottom here so into the two and a half set that down Start at my cut line, and I'm going right down. So there we have our squares, all cut. Take my trimmer out of the way. Let's set our pages down that we're rebuilding this on. Number one, number two. Our lower pieces are at the top, one and two. And then our two inside pieces, we're just reversing, right? So there's number one and there is number two. So that looks like your base that you had on your original page. That looks pretty nice. Next up, we're gonna be cutting our other pieces. So let's just set this to the side right now and we'll do our cutter part. Now with this cutter part, this one is a bit directional again. If you look at your sketch page, it's showing that it has little lines going across and I do want to see those. Here I'm cutting a vertical cut. So if I cut my paper this way, I'm going to have long skinny lines on these uh, position number four and five because I want to have hor um, horizontal lines across that pattern I am going to rotate my page so uh, piece number three four and five are going to be these panels here here and here and pieces one two and six are going to be the darker panels so here we go. Our cuts are going to be as follows. So 
put on my trimmer. Our first cut is going to be the six inch down the page here. Going to the six inch mark. Easy. Our second cut is going to be our four by six. We've already cut the six, so we're going to rotate and cut at four inches. That was piece number two. These are the ones we're working the darker side. Our next piece here, number three, it's saying cut six by two. We've already got the six. Let's cut the two, rotate and cut two inches. That piece is done. Our next piece here, this is where we're doing our two one inch pieces. So I am actually going to go this way so I have more on the base. And I'm going to cut my two one inch strips. One inch and one inch. And this will leave me my four by 10 piece. So let's put the base of this together. We'll take our two pieces, set them down. I'm just gonna set them down and I'll glue them all on after. So you don't have to watch me using all my adhesives. One piece, two piece, three piece, four. Over here we have, see on the top, there we go. So this piece is the long piece that's gonna go here. This piece is the one piece that's gonna run underneath first. So let's take you off. And this piece goes down here. This piece goes down here. This piece goes across here. This is your piece that sits in here. This is your big mat piece that goes here. Now in your cut apart sheet, they actually gave you a third color up here because we're just cutting one second sheet. We're gonna have two the same, but it's definitely so close. That'll be my little title box that will sit there really nicely. Uh, for my enhancement piece, I could do my last little cut here. I could have punched two borders and ran two of them, but I just said, oh, I'll just cut one in half. I'll give that a nice cut. There we have our mirrored scallop pieces. And this just sits on top here. Just like so. And on this side, it slides underneath this piece here. And just like so. So we have our final sketch page and that's it with a different set of pages. I'll add my embellishments and I'll add my uh, blocks for my photo mat holding spots and I'll show you the final page. Now remember these photo mats are recommended sizes. You can still put a full four by six and a smaller piece or you know, a small piece of journaling box and change your spacing around here. You can do two small photos instead of one really big mat here. So there's always lots of variations within these sketches again. And again, you can always add more photos than are called for on this page. But this one does give you six photos on the two page spread. So here is my completed page following the sketch as it was outlined in kit number one. I had a lot of fun doing this. I look forward to getting the simple cage pit number two and keeping a collection of alternate pages 
creating my own templates based on these sketches. I hope you had fun, learned something, and we'll see you again the next time we link up. Well, wasn't that fun? On my channel, I don't post very often and I don't post promotions or sales for any particular page kit or product. I usually try and teach a technique that you can do over and over again with any product you have on hand. So if you find that helpful and you, helpful and you enjoy learning things, do like and subscribe and pass me along to your friends. Thanks.